Yeah, so to extend that, you know, talking about documentation. Um, so you've all read the, the comic. Yeah, not just witty comments in your code. Anyway, so, so let's take, um, let's make some distinction between documentation versus comments. So comments, obviously, comments in your code. Uh, you start in target and talking about doc blocks, or just quick little snippets to say what's what's happening. So, you know, you're helping guide any other developer, especially in in a collaborative space like uh, like the WordPress open source community. You don't want to be the only one working on it. Like that's the the point of open source is to say, okay, I've come up with this idea. This is the code that I've built around it. Who wants to help me? Um, but it also helps. Good, good comments can help you build your developer documentation. Whereas documentation, it can help the end user. So that could be a developer, but it's usually geared more toward the person in, in, in WordPress parlance, installing the theme, installing the, the plugin, and giving them step-by-step -step instructions on you know any stuff that's outside of the box of what WordPress would do. So, yeah, code comments. Ooh. That didn't end up well on PowerPoint. Anyway. So, so why would you want to do comments? I mean, I've got my points. I, I, I'm fully open to any of you, you know, chiming in. So, like, why would you want to put co comments in your code? Well, you know, you want, uh, like I said earlier, you want other people to help you out with your code. And, you know, not everyone writes obvious code, but, you know, that's the goal, but that's not always the case. So it's, it's for you to understand your code, because if you wrote it, and then six months later you have to go back to it, <laughs> you know what? Uh, I, I mean, I've looked at some of my code from eight months ago and go, what the heck was I thinking? <laughs> like, really? Um, yeah, again, going back to the ease of creating a code reference, I'll, I'll touch on that a little bit later, but, uh, or no, but um, yeah, but, uh, who's heard of PHP Documenter? Anybody? No? PHP Documenter? So it's it's basically it's a it's a um, a framework that you essentially feed it your code, and as long as you have good doc blocks and good commenting within your code, it will actually create a reference a code reference for you. Um, so um, think about the WooCommerce uh, API documentation. Um, it's a, I, I don't know that they used PHP Documenter, but I'm pretty sure they used an automated tool and then filled in the blanks that the comments didn't, didn't put in there. But you, yeah? Does it run like where along the path does it get integrated? Anytime. Um, usually w once it's done, like the, you basically do it once your release is ready um, and then it spits out HTML. Um, because it's like a process. It's, it's not something that, that gets, like, it's not something that's dynamic. It's something that's static. It's created and you dump it in, you know, on your, on your server or on an S3 bucket or something like that. Um, but it's essentially all linked and, you know, shows all the different classes, show how they interrelate as long as you've done that documentation process in, like, the, the doc blocks. Make sense? Um, yeah, and to-do list for yourself. So if there's a, there's a feature that you want to integrate, but it's not critical, you can put that in. Um, or even if it's as you're going and you say, oh, I need to parse this string to, into a, an array. Uh, that's a bad example. But, uh, but you put it the at to-do, and it will actually put it in. A lot of uh, IDEs will actually call it out for you. We'll either highlight it, or we'll actually put it as like an almost like an error or a warning, um, saying you need to look at that later, or whenever you open the file, it's like, oh, hey, look at that. And as I said before, being a, a good open source citizen, if you want people to use your code, if you want people to collaborate on your code, comments are going to help people get into it a whole lot easier. And usually, when it comes to open source, people are doing it because they like it. 
And if you're making it difficult for them to do that, they'll just go on to a different project. When? So some are on the fence of the usefulness of code. And a lot of, the, a lot of this is more on the compiled languages side of things. So you're talking like a C and its iterations, Java, that sort of thing. Because it, does, it doesn't do anything for the compiler. It's essentially writing code twice, because you're writing it for the compiler and you're writing it for the human looking at it later. Um, you know, and uh, in the case of JavaScript and CSS, if you put a lot of comments in, it's going to take up bandwidth. When someone downloads it, they're downloading everything, including those comments, unless you minify, which is obviously a good idea, but that's another discussion. Um, yeah. I think always. Like, yeah, it's, it might be an unpopular opinion, but comments are critical to your understanding, other people's understanding. It, it's, it's the pros outweigh the cons every time, to me. Again, it might be an unpopular opinion. Sure. I, I, I am going to touch on that, yeah. Okay. Um, but you know what? Well, it's a discussion. Because we're a small group here, it's, it's all good. Um, my, uh, so the, the point that I made, I can't remember which slide it's on, but yes, uh, you should aim to write excellent code. Two things that don't, cover that, that don't get covered there is if you want to get to a point where you're creating automated documentation, that won't help you. You'll get, uh, like if, if it's a, I, I haven't used PHP Documenter in a couple years, but what it spits out is it looks at your comments first, and then it looks at the method or function. So if there's no comment, then it'll just give you the, the function and you know what variables it expects. But if you're not explicit about what your function or method expects, it doesn't know, it says, um, so like, uh, create array, um, you know, uh, say data one, instead of data one being a string, it's expecting a string, it'll just say mixed. So even though your function would treat that as a, a string, if someone passes an array, it'll blow up, right? And I mean, it's, it's not, at the end of the day, it's not a big deal because we're not, you know, as WordPress developers, we're not dealing with like high scale, high um, volatility data, but it's a good idea to be a little bit more strict with yourself because again, it helps people understand your code because it may, it may be completely obvious to you, but it might not be to someone else even with good variable names and you know, well-structured code and all that, uh, your understanding might be different from someone else's understanding. But I was going to post a meme there, but it had intellectual property, so I made my own. So yeah, where? So your code should be self-explanatory, exactly. What may be clear to you may not be clear to others. Um, yeah, so use comments as a means to briefly explain the file, the class, or function using a doc block, again, because of the documentation tools that are out there, uh, and a code block using, uh, or a comment block is what I meant to put there. No, a code block. No, that's okay. I'm confusing myself. See? If I had commented <laughs> my own slides, I would understand. Anyway, uh, so yeah, uh, if, you're, if you're wanting to just do like a code block that's within a function or something like that, then you can use just a simple comment. Some people will actually go to, to lengths of actually creating a small doc block. I don't do that, but your mileage may vary. Oh yes. This is another good reason for, uh, like it's uh, funny. I'll let y'all read that first because it's funny. Stop judging me. 
So yeah. Simple comments. I'm sure all of you know what comments look. Doc block is more the the interesting stuff. So this is a PHP doc. So this specific doc block is for uh, a method within a class. Um, it's super super simple, but you kind of get the idea that you know, the parameter is there is, is expecting an array, and yeah, that's, it kind of it, so it's 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 essentially that it's if you're uh, if you have multiple parameters, you just do it on separate lines, but param and then the type, the name of it, and an explanation of what what that data should be. Uh, and then return, you won't actually see the return, obviously, because I didn't write actually a full function. But, you know, uh, what, the, what the function returns or a method returns, and then an explanation of it. And you don't necessarily need to do a description, but that's one of the things that's recommended, especially around the duck. You look like you have a question. <laughs> Some will. Pretty sure Eclipse does, if you're that nerdy. Um, I can be ton at times, but I use PHP Storm, uh, which actually generates them properly, and there are plugins that will read it. Um, but at the end of the day, that this is for the two things, other people reading your code and the automated documentation tools. I think, yeah, you don't read it. No, that's right. I, I agree with you there. But if you want to bring someone else into, into the fold, then it helps them. Because it's like, oh, I don't have to read through the code. I just go, oh, that's what it does. OK. Oh, I need to fix something that it's doing. Eh, OK, it looks like it's there kind of thing. Been, I'm sorry to go, No, go for it. Well, yeah, and I mean, uh, I, I've been kind of going more along the lines of, you know, if you're a plugin or a theme developer, but if you're doing something for a client, and, you know, the, the thing that they always say is, if you get hit by a bus, what happens? Mm -hmm. um, not that I w would wish that on anyone, but, I mean, even if it's something as simple as you move halfway around the world, and you no longer can deal with that client, so they have to go find someone else. You've done it, uh, so, so let's say you've built a theme from scratch and a couple plugins from scratch for their site because nothing else fits or it doesn't fit enough. Okay, it's great, you're, you're an awesome developer. Did you comment your code? If someone else has to take over, what are they getting into? Again, you can create code that is very self-explanatory to you. But that doesn't mean that everyone can read your code. And at the end of the day, yes, they, they will be able to read it because you know there are a plethora of PHP functions and WordPress functions and JavaScript functions that are well documented everywhere else. But then you're creating more work for that new developer to go and figure out, if they haven't used it, to go and figure out what each of these things do. Uh, JS doc. Hello? There we go. JS doc, very similar, uh, except in this case, they use the curly braces around what data type it is. So. Oh.
maybe I don't know. Okay. Yeah. So uh, now that WordPress has a very full-fledged API uh, built in, REST's API, um, you might want to start looking into, uh, depending on how you're developing, if you want to use the REST API, I know a lot of people who are trying to go t more towards um, using the WordPress backend and no front end, uh, though they call it headless, headless WordPress. Um, so if you're creating or you're using um, uh, more the API side of things, well, you might want to document that as well. Um, who's ever heard of, who's heard of uh, Apiary or Swagger? Swagger is the big one, or at least it used to be. So it's a um, it's an API documentation standard. It's basically Markdown uh, with a little bit of extra flair for um, for documenting like what you should be passing to this API, what your expected return is, what errors you could get. You know, so APIs seem to use more of the um, uh, uh, the HTTP error codes than anything else I've ever seen. So like a four 21 is unexpected entity, which means you've given it wrong data. But basically what you're doing is you're expanding out um, the information that someone would need to access that API without touching your code. So like you'll see, um, I'm trying to think of a good one that's used it. I've just done a lot of, or I've seen and I've done a few um, API documentations, but um, you know what? I'll actually show you what I did recently. It's not WordPress based, but you'll forgive me. Uh, 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 go. Let's just go. Do that right? Nope, that's not the right site. Uh, if you're be home. Yeah, that's the right one. All right. Uh, I'm going to sign in with GitHub. Oh, it's still my password. Actually, I don't have my phone on me. Um, no, that's not going to work. I probably should have planned this. <coughs> oh, wait a sec. Yeah. Do have another one. In here. Projector is not happy. Okay, so this is an API. This is API documentation. Um, so, yeah, so it just it's it literally is just a markdown document that has a little bit more information when it comes to you know what's expected, what uh, so like what the different errors you can get. This one it doesn't really get into the nitty gritty. So like with um, some of the more complex ones, you can actually, it, it'll actually give you um, like kind of uh, accordion style where you have the different endpoints that you can hit and you click on it and it will actually give you uh, like a text re representation, like, like a paragraph of what, you, what this endpoint does. But over on that side, it actually shows you the JSON 
that they like that the API expects, and then you scroll down and you see the JSON that would be returned. So it's really it's a really robust platform. Swagger does the same thing, um, but uh, if you're getting into uh, into using and building APIs for the word for the WordPress JSON API or RESTful API, then you're going to want to maybe look at this, especially for like the stuff that you're building on top of, or if you're expanding, like, or if you're making your own. Yeah, go for it. So why use uh, this instead of uh, the other one showed for the PHP? So PHP Documenter is for PHP code. This is for someone who isn't, who isn't touching your code, but needs to get to your API. So when I say API, I mean RESTful API, where they're sending just JSON data and returning JSON data. Right. However, based on, so if you're providing, so let's, let's flip this on its head a little bit. Let's say what you're building is very uh, sensitive uh, or like the person that you're building it for is not wanting the code to be open source. Um, then what you want is that, but you want anyone or specific people to go in and actually use the API, but not touch the code. That's what this is for. So if something goes wrong or right, they have a rough idea what's going on. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, going back to, so, again, it's, it's, it's going to be very similar to a user docu document and that you want to be verbose, but not too verbose. You want to give them as much information as they need and no fluff. Um, yeah, and uh, as I said, give every possible use case error that you can think of. Um, so, like, if they pass a string that should be a number, I mean, PHP is pretty good about switching it if, it, it, if it's a string with a number. But anyway, um, give them what would uh, show them what would be returned. So like um, the go-to for incorrect data is, uh, as I said earlier, a 421 error uh, and what JSON data would be sent back, if any. Because um, I mean, when it comes to an error, a lot of APIs will just send an error code back with an empty da uh, data set. But some people want, you know, a more robust information because 421 Yes, it's a specific HTTP error code, but your, your code that created that API could actually send back data saying this field was passed with this data and it should have been passed with this. All, you know, there's, there's varying uh, chatter about what, those, what that data, like error data, should be sent back. That's completely up to you and your users. Um, and yeah, th that's the other thing. So the one that I was going to show you that I, I couldn't remember the, the URL for, um, I have actually edited probably 30 times in the past six months because someone said, oh, what about this? Oh, I didn't think of that. It, wasn't, it was a project I inherited, so that helps matters that you know, I didn't think of it. But um, yeah, it's not, it's not always readily apparent to you, even if you've written it, how your API will act, especially because you're tapping into the WordPress API. There might be something that you don't know about. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, we kind of talked about this. Oh, yeah, that, that's the other thing. I, I've had uh, at least four developers that use the API that I, develop, uh, that I took over and said, oh, um, this doesn't work. Okay, did you read the documentation? Yeah. Well, did you read the part that said this part doesn't work? Well, no. Okay, we'll go back and read that part. So, I actually took that chunk that said. So, that's the the, the other thing about API. API. Can you talk apiary. It actually creates a um, code snippets for people to use. 
but I still haven't figured out why their code snippet doesn't work for my API, even though when you look at it and you di dissect it, it should. But then when I go into another tool um, called Postman, which basically tests APIs, um, the code that it creates does work. So there's probably a flag that I just haven't really dug deep enough into that that Postman sets, but not API. Anyway. Um, yeah, so we talked about uh, documenting the data structures. Yeah, leave as little room for error as possible. User guides. Now this is the one that I found the most interesting because I've never actually written a user guide. But we kind of did some digging, some, some research. research. And there's kind of a prevail uh, prevailing uh, theme keep the jargon out of it. Um, so if there is internal jargon or developer jargon, keep it out. Uh, well, if you were in the, the last talk talking about uh, Gutenberg and page builders, uh, Nick talked about you know uh, JavaScript developers coming into the fold because of how, um, how Gutenberg is built. What does that mean to an end user? You have to explain it. But that was, uh, it, not that JavaScript, well, JavaScript is sort of jargon, but um, at the end of the day, what does that mean for the end user? You can say, oh, this is built on JavaScript. Okay. What does that mean for me? I've never touched a line of code in my life. I'm not saying it's me. But I've never touched a line of code in my life. I'm installing a plugin because it's built on JavaScript. What does that mean? What does that mean for my site? What does that mean for my customers? So keep the jargon out of it. Or if you, if you need to explain it with jargon, explain the jargon. That's jargon. Leet. It's so, so <laughs> leet. It's, uh, it's um, hacker speak, basically. For elite, yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, yeah, so like, and know your audience. Is it, is it a novice? Is it for someone who's just starting out? Or do you know for a fact that it's gonna be a pro user or a developer, you know, and is that developer new? Is that developer, you know? Um, use plain language, keep it simple. No long paragraphs. Point form is actually better, especially when you're talking about like step-by-step -step instructions. Don't get into like don't put like step 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 and then a paragraph about what's happening at this point if it's relevant okay uh if the user could care less about it just keep it out uh, i don't think it's necessary yeah that's another thing what does your project solve uh, i mean that's uh, it, if we're talking about a wordpress plugin that's going to be your your front page. Like, what what does your plugin do? Because sometimes the name you if you want to be creative with your name, that may not tell the end user what it is or what it does. So that first paragraph needs to be the elevator pitch. What does your plugin do? What is it going to do for me? Uh, you know, as I said, step by step instructions, frequently asked questions, um, how and where to get support. Plugin. The, the the nice thing is that's that's kind of a built-in thing with with plugins, because it has it has the WordPress.org uh, chat. So I shouldn't be scrolling. Sorry, um, I'm thinking it loud. But um, yeah, so it kind of has that built in. But if you get to a point where you're building um, commercial plugins or like pay for support plugins is really what it boils down to. Where are those people going to get their support? Because if your plugin isn't on the repository, where are they going to go? If it's just an email address, uh, fine. Um, but I would go so far as to have uh, a, like a, a user forum or, because uh, I mean, BB Press, perfect, perfect example. That's something to throw up real easy. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, um, um, Zendesk. Uh, there's a half a dozen things that 
are free for small sites and then maybe you need to start paying for it if it gets a little bigger. But yeah, I mean, by all means, you need to have a place that, or like a knowledge base where, you know, if someone asks a question, you go, oh, I didn't even think of that. Write a small step-by-step -step or a small article about it. Um, screenshots. Did I mention screenshots? Yeah, four times? Was it just four? I probably should have done a little bit more. But no, um, you know, when, um, when, they're, when you're going through a step-by-step -step, uh, bit, screenshots are invaluable. You know, depending on how someone learns will be, you, can, you have the text and you have the image. Uh, some people will just look at the image and go, oh, that's what happens there. They won't even look at the text. So if, if at all possible, have as much, have, have as many images as you can that kind of step them through the process. And this is my guiding principle when it comes to, to commenting, to documenting, to creating user guides. If you were to, so you're developing something, it's amazing, you're giving it out to people, but if they don't know how to use it, okay. Um, so it, it flip that around. If you went out, grabbed a plugin because you knew that it would do exactly what you needed to do, but you had no idea how to use it because they didn't do documentation, how would that make you feel? Like if you spent an extra hour or five hours or 10 hours because you knew that that person or that plugin did what you needed it to do, but you just didn't know how to do it, uh, you're just creating headaches around the world. I'm, I'd be interested to hear and, and chat about it. I agree, and that's and that's where. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, and that's and that's I said a couple times that brevity is key. Um, give them enough information. Don't give them too much, and that goes across everything. That goes with commenting. That goes with documentation, whether it's for an API or or a user guide. Um, they the end user will not want to wade through paragraphs of your life story. <laughs> I just want to use your plugin. Just get over it. You know? Yeah, exactly. Which button do I click? I need to do this. Which button do I click? Well, when I was young. <laughs> Not that anyone does that, but you're right. In, in commenting, especially in commenting, I find user guides to be way too brief and not detailed enough. Uh, at least on the plugin repository. Um, but uh, I don't know where I was going with that. I lost my train of thought. For commenting, yeah, sorry. Um, for commenting, I find when um, it, it's, it seems to be either end of the spectrum. I find very few, and I will be the first person to be honest that I don't comment enough, and I catch myself. Like I actually looked at uh, the uh, another um, uh, client uh, thing that I'm working on. I haven't been documenting thing at all. I'm like, oh crap! I need to go back and do that. You know, again, even if it's just the doc blocks for the classes, the methods. You know, breaking up my CSS to be, you know, based on the screen or the the area of the site that I'm working on. Um, so that you're not wading through, you know, I think my biggest project that I worked on, not alone, was 10,000 lines of CSS. And the original person put it in one file. <laughs> and no comments. <laughs> so, I mean, the nice thing was they were a little bit descriptive with their divs. Uh, so I was able to find things relatively easy, but it still took me about three weeks to really get comfortable. And this was like a long-term project. So, yeah, I mean, you're right. 
there there is there is a fine line between there, that that line is uh, that's good commenting. This is too much. This is too little. Um, where you land, that's that's completely up to you. And again, it's it's going to come down to the code that you write and the comments that you write may make perfect sense to you, but I would almost err on the side of too much versus too little. Yes, there is a good, there's a, there, there's a, that, you know, that zone of the right amount, but I would go a little bit more because what, again, comes down to what you think makes sense may not make sense to someone else. Yeah. Uh, so basically, it comes down to, as you said, con uh, doing a doc block for a class and for your methods. Um, I know uh, a lot of, uh, I've seen lots of uh, classes where they have a doc block for each individual um, class uh, property. It's like, okay, that's a little overkill. Because <laughs> like, it's not doing anything when you declare it. Um, that's where uh, you know a, a well uh, named variable uh, is is better than a big piece of like a big doc block just for a variable name. It's a little overkill. Um, so yeah, but like going down, my 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 minimum is class method, and if I feel the need. I will like separate out a block and put a comment at the top. Like if there's, like if a function or a method does this thing, but it has like kind of three steps, I'll chunk it out whether I put comments or not. But if one part I write a little shorter for brevity's sake or for um, for uh, efficiency, then I will definitely put a comment above it saying, this is what this does, I'm sorry it's too short, <laughs> or something, you know. And I usually put a joke in my comments somewhere. There's at least one joke in every project that I've worked on. Um, but yeah, that's kind, of, that's kind of the minimum for me. And then when it comes to um, uh, JS is similar to PHP, I try and do objects where I can because that kind of, again, makes for more readable code rather than just a bunch of jQuery callbacks. Um, that can be kind of annoying, but um, and then CSS is kind of just uh, depending on if you're doing, you know, SAS or less, that makes it for more readable CSS. But at the end of the day, um, depending on you know who you're talking to and what the uh, what the expectation is, I will at least chunk out my my CSS and put like this is for these are home page styles or this is a specific block style. Uh, or these are block styles, that sort of thing. But again, it's it's completely up to you. But you know, uh, that's kind of my minimum. Yeah. Do you know if PHP uh, Documenter will give some sort of uh, coverage metric on how how much your code is covered by? I think it does. Well, and at the end of the day, when you when it spits out. If you haven't put a doc block, it will be very obvious. Um, yeah, I, I, it, PHP Documenter does. Uh, I think it, it gives you a report once it's done. So I, I would, I would have to look into that. But uh, PHP Documenter .net, I think, uh, is the site. But just do a search for PHP Documenter, and it's great. Actually, I have, uh, yeah, the link. Oh, why did that go blue? White. But there, if you want to take a picture of that, uh, that's all the uh, that's all the references. PHP doc, yeah, PHP doc .org actually is the is PHP doc okay. Don't hate me that I put Magento on there. <laughs> but they had good JS documentation standards, so.
that were very much similar to a PHP job. Yeah. 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 No problem. Right. Wow, that went well longer than I expected it to. Any other questions? You all good? All right. Well, thanks for coming out to WordCamp Hamilton. Thank you.